Check one, check two, checking four, five, seven, seven, eight, nine, nine being the third of the month. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool. Use that. Do you know the, the saying, the jack of all trades is a master of none? You know that, that saying, right? Mm-hmm. You know what the whole saying says? Mm-hmm. Jack of all trades, master of none, but master of one. Wait. <laughs> Uh, welcome back to Front Street. We got another episode going on. We don't have a guest this week. It's just going to be us. It's the boys. It's the boys. The on boys. Front Street. On uh, Front Street. I'm John Labrada. This is uh, Mr. Moreno, aka Jaime, aka the Man, aka the Big Dog. The Big Dog. What's up, guys? How's it going? How's it going? I hope your spring break was fantastical. By the time you see this, it'll be the week after spring break. But I hope your week after spring break was fantastical when you got back to school and saw your homies. Do people greet each other after missing like? Like when you, if you don't see anybody during the break, when you see them again in class, do you like dab it up or what do you do? Yeah, no, no, you dab it up, you be, you, but you make it like excitable. You're like, ah. Like, like I went up to someone and they were all like, yummy. And I was like, what? <laughs> you, know? you didn't do that, did you? No, I did 100%. Oh, man, that's sad. Shout out to uh, Conejo. <laughs> Rabbit came again. I didn't even see her. She walked in for, and Monday. Uh, I was like on my computer during anchor time. She came and she gave me a hug. I was like, who's that? Oh, yeah. Rabbit. What's, What's up, Rabbit? Yeah. You just make it a little more exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I feel that. 100%. Yeah. We, when I was in school, we would just be like, what's up? Like, I didn't see you oh, you, were just, you were just what's gangster up, like that. Yeah, no, I was pretty thugged up. Nah, man. I love my friends. G's up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. We've got a couple things we're going to talk about since it's just the boys. We'll have a little bit of extra time to talk. Um, I know you know this, but... There's people out there like I want to be on the pod. No, there is. I, I there's, I've it's been getting dope. stopped in the hallways, Bro. and it's it's like a I'm not saying it's a celebrity moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's 100. percent Did you want a picture with that conversation? What's his, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jared. Jared. Yeah, uh, he was. Jared's like, went, hey, you on the list? Don't worry. I told him to send in a resume. Run a ropes. Rock, Mr. Rock came up to me the other day and was like, "How come I'm not on the podcast?" I was like, "Oh, you want some fam? All right. Uh, it's nothing personal to anybody. That, However, therefore, because of the why. Because of the why. Send in a resume. That's we right. treat everybody the same. That's right. We we got we got people that we yeah, want. Jared did ask me today. He was like, Rem- he reminded he's you. He's like the podcast, and I was like, you gotta have something you want to talk about. He's like, my Twitch. I was like, bro, <laughs> <laughs> my Twitch. I was like, all right, man. All right. I guess we'll talk about Twitch. <laughs> all right. So we got a couple things we're gonna talk about today in the pod. Um, First things up that we got is death row mail. Now, before you say anything, no, I'm not. We're not gonna be executed. But however, the four because of the why. Because of the why, and the why in this regard would be like if you had one last meal that you're like, this is the meal that you just like it when you go into whatever world you believe in, right? Heaven or you get reincarnated or you become a crystal. I don't know whatever it is that you're into. What's the last thing that you want to eat before you're no longer on this earth? Immediately what comes to mind is all the people that already had their last meals. Right. Like, for example, I think it was John Wayne Gacy. You know that? Yeah. yeah. Serial killer. It's kind of scary for a bit. Right. I think he had, like, a whole bucket of chicken from KFC. KFC. Yeah. And then there's other, like, prolific serial killers that one yeah, of them yeah, asked that. for, like, a kid. Right. And you can't, there was a whole thing that was like, oh, we rejected it. But then there was, like, a whole thing that, like, oh, no, they gave it to him. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, wait, chill. Yeah. But, yeah. And then there's some people that literally have nothing but toast and an apple. Okay. Not that I've ever been bored and went to the um, death penalty museum that's in Huntsville. That but I have. too specific. Yeah. <laughs> but I have. Um, and so there's this part of it. They have this wall of like different things that inmates have asked for on their last meal. And some of them are just like real precise. Mm-hmm. One was like the wildest. It was like five pounds of steak, two pounds of mashed potatoes. Like, and it was like specific to the poundage. But that's the thing. When you think about it, you're not you're not gaining all that weight for a while. No, you can just, you're, you're, bro, you, you can, can eat until you're eat done. It, and then you're like, oh, you know what? I don't got to worry about the calories. I know. I'm going to be dead. Word. So you can eat whatever you and want. And for the most part, they grant them what they want. No, 100%. They, they will give you whatever you want. All right. On that concept, if you had one last meal, what would be, what would be the components of your last meal? So <clears throat> I'd like to start off with six fried chicken legs because I love fried chicken. Wait, like drumsticks or like drumsticks, and everything? Yeah, just, just drumsticks. Okay, okay. Six of those. Right. Mashed potatoes. Of course. And then potato salad. Oh, okay. Doubling up. Uh-huh. 
but like like run like charro beans. No, like charro beans. Okay. Charro beans. Okay. Cornbread. Uh huh. I would want the hot chocolate lava cake from Chili's <laughs> with the ice cream on top. Right. Okay. Okay. One hundred percent. I would like that. Okay. And I want a cupcake. I just want a cupcake. Any cupcake. Any cupcake. Okay. Preferably red velvet with the cream cheese. Oh, you and, and your red velvet, velvet, dude. But you know, I think with that, I'd be ha- I'd be satisfied. I'm Ooh. listening to you, Joaquin. I have you know what's a good idea? I just thought of if I got that guy Salt Bay. To do. <laughs> if he came up with that whole treasure chest steak and just, yeah, I don't even think I'd eat it. I just, just for the see sake him of having, yeah, 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 and I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. No, I get that. Um, so six fried chicken leg court, like leg drumsticks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, mashed potatoes. Mm-hmm. The taters. Tater salad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cornbread. Mm-hmm. Hot lava cake and chato beans. Chato beans. And some sort of a cupcake. And some sort of cupcake. Okay. Oh, and French fries. Oh, French fries. I'm French fries go right so now. hard. I got, that's good. You know what's funny? Is you kind of only have one, like, traditional Mexican element in it, which is the chato beans. Oh, I did. <gasps> oh, Bro. I, bet, I wonder if anybody's ever ordered, like, migas. Oh, that would be a great <laughs> last meal. That would be a guys. great last meal. I love you guys. He'd be like, can I get a taco from Lupita's? I said what I said. Ooh. Um, <laughs> Scandalous. Mm, okay. Um, okay. So that's really funny that you said that. Because I always, when I have this conversation, it's always one of two things. It's either fried chicken, because I love fried chicken. I love fried chicken. Or a steak. But I'm going to flip it. Because there is a meal, there's an entree that honestly is my favorite thing to eat. Which is I love chicken fried steak I love a good with the cream like the white gravy on top fam mm-hmm, mm-hmm. bro I love chicken fried steak love Ooh, chicken fried steak you just want one nah you'd go for the four I get like the dinner one which is like usually like a <laughs> no, yeah, 20 huge. ounce thing oh that's crazy I would take that <clears throat> um, mac and cheese homemade not from the box I want like a good baked mac and cheese mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like gooey chewy, cheesy and everything so mac and cheese, I would, I would take my mom's, like I was her her rice. Mm, it have to be specifically made by your mom. Correct. Or just the same recipe. No, by my mom. Okay. So I'd have to die soon, I guess. Um, so rice, mac and cheese. I love a good mashed potato, dog. Mashed potatoes go so hard. They do. They do. They're so good. I would also want cornbread. But like a jalapeno, like a spicy cornbread, Ooh. not an oversweet. Okay. And I'd want some homemade tortillas. So both tortillas and cornbread. You got to have those tortillas. Mm. Um, and this is going to be weird. Maybe maybe it's not. Uh, onion rings. Onion Like rings. a good, fresh, like fried onion ring. Hmm. I could see that. Yep. I like the cactus bloom from Chicken Oh, yeah, 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 Those yeah. go hard. Those go hard. So if it's like that, I guess yeah, I yeah. understand. So but if you, it's like Jack in the Box? No, no, no. That's gross. Somebody tell me. I'm going to put your name out there. Mm. Put it on the front street. Alexis Medlin <laughs> had the audacity to say Sonic onion rings yeah, were the best. Before we, Bro. Usually when we mock up these questions, we'll ask people around be like, hey, what, what is this? What she, is that? She, Medlin oh, had... Sonic. had Sonic. We're like, and it, took, it Sonic. took her all of 0.3 seconds to answer that. So yeah. it's genuine. Yeah, it's Sonic, but the onion rings. I'm like, fam, those, those aren't even good. I want like, you remember, uh, I don't know if you've ever had them here, but like in Angleton, it's the same spot, like the Red Top, like the places over here off of the, across from CVS. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they, they will make like, you know, battered onion rings. I want like a good home battered type onion ring. Okay. Funnel cake would be good? Ooh, Bro. Funnel cake. Hold on, hold on. It's, ah, it's mine. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought about it. Okay. I'd have two separate types of drinks. I'd have Mexican Coke from the bottle. Mm-hmm. Like, from a, like, Like, cold. where you have to wrap the... Yes. Like, wipe the top because there's dirt. Because it's... Yes, yes, bro. I mean, cold, those, cold. Those go hard. Anyways. My new favorite drink, my most recent favorite drink that I drink all the time now, we call it the Giannis, which is a half lemonade, half Sprite. It goes so hard. It's like spicy Sprite. Like... Like a spicy lemonade. Yeah. It's so When good. I hear spicy Sprite, what comes to mind is McDonald's Sprite. No, no, no. It's better because it has lemonade, like a good lemonade in it. Ooh. Bro, half I'm lemonade. I'm going to have to try that. Everybody go to Bucky's. 
Go get your half lemonade, half 7-Up. It works the same. We call it the Giannis. There's a story behind it. I ain't got time for it. I got time. Whenever Giannis, the French, the, the French Greek, the geek freak, the Greek freak, right? Isn't that what they call him? Sure. The basketball player? Yeah. When they won the championship, there was a video that he made that got viral where he went to Chick-fil-A and asked for 51 chicken minis because that's how many points he scored in the final game. And then he asked for a half, lim- half lemonade, half Sprite. And it was, I tried it. I was like, there's no way this is good. It was the bomb. Anyway, mm-hmm. so Mexican coat, a Giannis. For dessert, I'm weird about more desserts, but I would also have two because you had two. I, I would have two. Peach cobbler. Mm-hmm. I think peach cobbler goes so stinking hard. All right, all right, all right. And tiramisu. What is tiramisu? Tiramisu is an Italian dessert that they, they soak they soak uh, cookies in espresso. Yeah, trust me. They soak it in espresso, and it's on the bottom layer, and then they make this, like, custard. It's like cream custard. It's uh-huh. like thick custard. And then they put um, cinnamon and whipped cream on top of it, and they bake it. Fam. That sounds great. It's so good. That sounds really good. Where'd you have that? Um, like random you went Italian to Italy. place. Just right. No, no, no. I haven't been to Italy yet. I will, though. <laughs> like random, random Italian restaurant. We'll say Olive Garden, but it wasn't Olive Garden. Um, and then we made it at home one time. It's, it takes a long... Making the custard is a long... It's a process. Mm. But it's so good. It's worth it. Bro, I love coffee, and I love cinnamon, and I love whipped cream, and I love the custard. Bro. All of that sounds good, except the coffee. I don't like coffee. Oh, man. You know, when I go to Starbucks, I get hot chocolate. No, you do not. 100%. Are you one of those weird dudes that get those, like, acai fre- refreshers? No, no. Oh. I, just, I just ask for regular hot chocolate with whipped cream. That's we went... I can't... Because coffee upsets my stomach. How dare for you? For one, the taste it isn't all that regular, great. It keeps you regular, and it puts me to sleep. Oh, uh, you know why? Why? We had this conversation, I think. Yes. No, that doesn't make any sense. Because it's I, a, it does an op- opposite effect. I get. I, if look, you have a for any bro. any Mexican kids out there with traditional Mexican parents, they don't. This is a hot topic, but most Mexican parents don't believe in mental disorders, right. stuff like that, uh, health stuff like that too. Right. And so when I was a kid, my mom didn't see anything wrong with me. So you were just I was crazy never and you go diagnosed. Everywhere. Bro, so I'm, not I'm just telling you. That. I'm telling you that what is what is the medicine they give them? Met- metha something? It's a, they give kids who have ADD and ADHD like essentially they give them stuff like Ritalin. Ritalin is an upper fam. And why does it work? Cuz it reverses the effect of your like energy. That's crazy. With normal people you would take coffee and it get you all wired, right? Yeah. Right. I drink coffee. Right. I, I get, I'm kind of the same way now. I mean, it's sort of, but like people who are hyper, hyperactive, if you give them caffeine, it does the opposite effect. It slows you down. For it anybody wondering, coffee. this kind of since the beginning of the year and when people started telling me again, people think I have like ADHD or ADD. Right. However, therefore, because of the why. I was never diagnosed. I was never diagnosed either. So I'm not I, claiming I, it. I know the, I know this, the, the, anyway. Whatever. I'm just saying. I love coffee. Look, mental health um, awareness. From, mental we got it from the last episode. That's right. Still working it. Um, so yeah, I would, chicken fried steak. Man, I'm telling you, dude, it would be it would be obnoxious how much food I would eat because it's going to be the last one. What does it matter? 100. percent Yeah. I wouldn't even be upset if I I threw up. I'd be like, that's fine. Who okay. <laughs> Round Keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> that's horrible. But yeah. But it makes sense because it's your last. Is there anything you would eat that's just like kind of off the wall that you're like most people wouldn't eat as a last meal? Uh, I want to try elephant steak. Oh, my God. Which is bad. Horrible. I'm not a poacher. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> I don't poach. I don't agree with that. Um, however, the four because of the why. Just Someone out there it, yeah. has elephant steak and they know what it tastes like. Yeah. I feel. Okay. Honestly, I feel like it has like a sweet, no, spicy taste. It's probably to it. like gamey and nasty. But no, I don't think it's gamey. Gamey no. would be like a hippo. I feel like hippos taste. You gamey. know what's funny is Miss um, Broom had some exotic animals in the I, classroom, and um, I got to hold a kangaroo. There's a kangaroo, <laughs> and I, I'm not saying you that did. I would. You did not. Well, let me finish. Oh, I'm not saying that I would, but they do use kangaroo meat. To eat in Australia and different places. When I held that baby kangaroo, <laughs> and I not a single thought of man, this guy would go delicious no, I, with some let barbecue me finish. sauce. Let me finish. I thought, man, I don't this remember who it was. Somebody was there, one of the room's cl- uh, students, and I was just like, 
Yo, we eating kangaroo? <laughs> she looked at me like, what did you, you tell that like, to the animal lovers? Yeah, I was like, oh, I mean, they eat it, bro. Well hey, fam, they eat horse. Face. People eat horse meat. Relax. People do eat horse meat. Hashtag Wendy's. Shout out to them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Wendy so that we don't get sued. That's not actually a thing that we've ever heard. We would never promote that from you. But, dude, there are certain countries that they do eat. They will eat. Look, I knew a dude from Peru. I'm being real. I don't trust you, Wendy. Okay. Because it's a square meat. I knew a dude from Peru, and he had told me once that one of the delicacies they eat in Peru. I'm not even kidding. Is cat. Cat? Yeah. Like, you're like stray, like cat. I don't cat. even know how that would taste. I don't know either. I think it'd be gross. Like chicken, but not? No. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. That's what I'm most. You know what I would also add to that? Wouldn't make any sense, but manula. Bro, manula goes so hard. It does, it does, it does. That would, but like, you gotta have like the red, red, red right. manula. Like but then I think that would also hurt all of my stomach if I ate a lot. Dog, you're about to die. It doesn't matter. That's why we can eat whatever That's we want. Right. Elephant right. steak. I want Elephant steak. You know what? I'm adding that one to my so list. You're so horrible. <laughs> Elephant steak. All right. Here's the next thing we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what are some things that are in the headlines that we want to kind of get people some info on. Some things that are maybe good, controversial, some like important things that are happening. We just want you to know about some things that are happening in the world. And the global zeitgeist. Okay. I'd like to start us off with um, Conor oh, McGregor. I keep saying zeitgeist, and people look at me like I'm saying, what, I'm, what is this word that I'm looking at? For those of you that don't understand it, I think we've talked about this. It's just like what's going on in the world. It's called zeitgeist. Go ahead. All right. Yeah. yeah. News right. you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to start us off with Conor McGregor, I love you. You are <laughs> one of my top tier idols. I want to be like you when I grow up. Not anymore. Why, why, why would you get arrested? <laughs> So <laughs> Conor McGregor recently got arrested for dangerous driving. Yeah. He had and, like a Bentley? Yeah, it was it was like an expensive Bentley. I saw the car, it looked beautiful. Yeah. Whatever. It would <laughs> be Connor. Like it yeah, would yeah. be Connor. But he had his Papa 12. For dangerous driving. Look. And I saw his mugshot. And honestly, Connor, you could have done better. I thought out he would be smiling or do the thing. Yeah. No, nah, he was just he was like, like stoic. He looked so serious. annoyed. Like mad. He looked so annoyed. Like, why would you arrest Conor McGregor in the <sighs> first place? By the way, shout out to the police. Um, Popo, looking out for you now because you arrested my boy McGregor. You know he fights in the UFC, right? Yeah, but he's also like four foot nothing. It doesn't he's matter. like 100. Have you not seen that guy? He bulked up. He, he, he bulked up to 170. He's not like a massive dude. Relax. He's only like 5'7". I'm pretty sure he's still strong now. He, I, that doesn't mean he's not. Yes, I agree. But... Um, <laughs> I'm not just I'm, yeah. just because I'm taller than Conor McGregor doesn't mean I'm gonna try to fight him. Well, no, I'm just saying <laughs> you make it sound like he's a giant. Well, here's what I'll say: Conor McGregor believes in the ego that was developed for him and by him. I, I 100 percent agree with that. Like if you if people tell you you're it, you're it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We've had this conversation about people. Who, yes, men. He has yes men, and the UFC did not help his clout no, at no. all. Some people even call him, like, they say he made the UFC what it is. Uh, and I'm relax. like, um, the, the he UFC brought made the drama. Him. Right. The UFC he, made him. He brought the drama. He they made the, him. He was a plumber the from nice freaking story. Ireland. Relax, fam. Um, you can fight. But, like, if you have the car that everybody knows, why are you going to drive stupidly? Bro, so you're dumb. asking to get arrested, fam. So dumb. But I love you. Yeah. I'm going to add to this. I love the UFC. You love the UFC. We're kind of UFC heads. I used to write for a, a website when I was in college. I would do like... When you first told me that, I was like, wow, you're amazing. Oh, oh that, nope. Uh, <laughs> I got press passes, the whole thing. Yeah, whatever. So there was another thing that came out news-wise. Um, all right, so I'm going to give you some names you may not know. Recently, there was a fight between two dudes named uh, Kobe Covington. Yes. He's an annoying guy who thinks, I don't know what's wrong with him. Um, and a fighter by the name of uh, Jorge Masvidal. So Jorge Masvidal came on the scene as a street fighter. Back when Kimbo Slice used to do street fight videos, this is way back in the day, it's like mid-2000s, uh, he was a kid, as a young kid from Miami, he would do the same thing. Uh, they call him Street Jesus. He is hood, fam. <laughs> like, Jorge Masvidal is legit from the streets. He doesn't play. When people talk about him, he, he oftentimes will be like, you don't cross the line with me because if you cross the line with me, like, blah, 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 blah. There was a famous incident after a fight where he he fought Darren Till and he was doing an interview and a dude walked up to him who was a fighter um, and said something and he walked up to him and he famously coined a three-piece in a soda. 
because the guy walked up to him. His name is Leon Edwards, and Jorge had his hands behind his back, and Leon had his hands up, like, what are you going to do? And he was like, in my world, like, if you put your hands up, that means you're ready to scrap. So I just gave him a three-piece of soda, and then I moved him out of my way. Anyway, so Jorge Masvidal and Kobe Covington used to be friends. They're no longer friends. They had a fight in the UFC recently. It wasn't a great fight. Kobe Covington just basically wrestled him and held him to the ground. Uh, Masvidal is from the street, and after the fight, he said— I made a better fight. I know. He said, yo, when I see you in the streets, you better be ready. So what happened when they were in the streets of Miami? Was he ready? <laughs> Kobe Covington was not ready, fam. <laughs> Jorge Masvidal gave him another three pieces of soda, That's broke crazy. his teeth, and now Kobe Covington, like, fought charges on him. He's, he got arrested. It's a whole schmeal. Don't mess with fighters. They're on a different level. Okay, so Don't mess with fighters? I said fighters, fool. No, look. I don't mess with spiders either. Whoever pulled the gun on Mike Tyson at the comedy club, you are so lucky. Mike Tyson recently, uh, he, someone pulled a gun on him. And right. And he was just out like at a comedy show or whatever. And instead of getting mad about it, Mike Tyson hugged it out. He gave him a hug. Bro, I would never pull a, a gun on Mike Tyson. <laughs> I don't care how old he is. He can still whoop He me. looks better now. Like, Bro. there was a phase where Mike Tyson did not look like he could fight anymore. Right. Because he didn't get away. He drugs. came back. Well, not out of nowhere. There was that whole Logan Paul fight thing. Yeah. But he lost he, weight and got in shape. Bah, 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 boom. Well, and then he had that fight with. Did he fight uh, Roy Jones and, like, some, I don't know, celebrity thing or whatever, some good exhibition? He got yeah, in he's good been shape. Done a lot of those. No, he still has. I've seen him do, like, where he'll talk to people that are fighters and, like, he, he would like show him little things and he does it with such quickness even he's like almost 60 now he's like in his mid 50s and he'll like do it with quickness I'm just like I don't want to, I don't want to be touched by him Mm-mm. I'm not well, touching you him you know what I bet when he gave him a hug the guy was so scared he was going to bite his ear off uh, <laughs> <laughs> so funny <laughs> yeah, it's good. He's like, ah. thank you <laughs> that's good uh, that's funny my news is not nearly as Weird. It is important. One more thing. Tyreek Hills. Uh, I don't know what you're doing in the Dolphins, but... Um, Why would you trade Tyreek Hill? Why would you trade Tyreek Why Tyreek would the Kansas City Chiefs trade Tyreek Hill? Why would Tyreek Hill go to the Dolphins? But he, they got... Regardless, they got like six draft picks for it. There's a ton of draft picks also, that the Chiefs the got. the Texans got three first-round draft picks? They're, that's the... I don't know if that came official, but that's what they're trying to get yeah. for... Well, watch them get like a first-round... Can't They're going to screw it up anyway. I don't know. It's whatever. Also, uh, also Dallas, Cowboy, Dallas Cowboys fans, um, it's our decade, bro. This is uh, our season. Russell We're Wilson got traded to the Broncos. That was a weird one, too. Did he? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He's like Seattle. Like that. He's Seattle. We're just Seattle. playing around at this yeah. point. It's whatever. It's so fun. my headline is not sports related at all. And that is we're about to get the first black female Supreme Court justice, which is an amazing thing. I'm going to say her name. Give me the clap. I'm so happy I got it right. If it was a laughing one. The Honorable Katanji, I think I said that correct. Katanji Brown Jackson is about to be um, a Supreme Court justice. She is way overqualified to be a Supreme Court justice. She's more qualified than anybody on the bench currently. Um, she was a public defender at one point. Um, she's done clerical work for the Supreme Court. Uh, she's been on a bunch of cases. She's been a judge for over a decade doing different like federal courts to like everything to state. Horribly qualified. Like, this is a no-brainer. I'm not going to go into the proceedings because it's dumb. However, they ask, they keep asking her a lot of like really like out-of-pocket questions that have nothing to do with her being a judge. And she has been super graceful and just been like giving her like— She's been the, heading it well? Yeah, giving, you know, like the, the like irritated mom face like— that has nothing to do with me being a judge, but I appreciate your question. Thank you. Move on. And they have nothing on her. She's going to be great. She is uh, – most of the time they're like, is this judge a conservative? Is she liberal? She's liberal-leaning, meaning she's left-leaning. However, most of her stuff that she's done has been pretty by the book. She's a good judge, and I love that she has dreads. I, you know what I mean? I love that she has locks. I love that she looks like your typical black woman because oftentimes in these situations they'll get the person that looks – Right, and not person that's a person that's just like genuine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, Kamala Harris looks like she's somebody's auntie. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Michelle Obama looked like somebody's auntie. Uncle, but go. Yeah, on. or, or or Barack looked like somebody's uncle. I'm talking about his wife. No, I know. I was talking about his wife. Yeah, too. and I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> and I think she. I think. I think that 
the honorable judge ja- uh, Jackson is going to do her job. I think it's great. I don't know what's taking them so long. They've had a Hispanic woman on there. They've had a black man on there so far. Um, they've had white women on there, but like I don't know why they're taking so long to get a black woman on there. But good for her. Shout out to all them. It's a good thing. I'll end with this. I don't know if y'all know this, but for the first time ever in a long time, the Senate unanimously agreed to a bill, which was the Daylight Savings Bill. Basically, starting November 2023, we will no longer move our clock back for the, for the winter. I know. Senate today approved a proposal to make daylight saving time permanent. If passed by the House and signed by President Biden, Americans would no longer have to set their clocks back an hour and lose afternoon daylight in the fall. It wouldn't take effect until November 2023 to give the transportation industry time to adjust its schedule. I kind of think it's a good idea. It's a big deal. This has been a thing they needed to do a long time ago. This I'm is, sincere. Hmm. So the House, I think, passed it yesterday, or they should be passing it pretty soon. It's going to be pretty much unanimous on the House side. They're going to give it to, to the president. Biden's going to sign it. Um, it'll be the first time in a long time that they've had a unanimous decision, like 100% yes, let's do this. I don't know why we still have the change, the time clock. The winter time, whenever they change that, the clock back. It's really horrible. There's there's evidence that this shows that seasonal depression happens and skyrockets because it gets darker earlier. Crime rates usually increase during the time when it's darker earlier. The longer in the day that it is bright, the better it is for everybody else. Mm-hmm. We don't have to worry about changing our clocks anymore. Is, Come November 2023. That's, that's a big great. deal. That's, yeah. that's insane. It should have happened years also, ago. Also, all that does is prove that our calendar is 100% wrong and we're still in 2012. Um, there's, or whatever. There's there's make rumors, up, make up for the hours. conspiracy theories that we're still in the 1600s, but that's not. Here. You can't tell me what happened in the 10 to 5 to 14 or 10 to 13. There's like 200 years, two, three, two to 300 years of like there's no evidence that it happened because they think they got the calendar wrong. I'm just saying what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> when they switch from the the, the class of twenty two. <laughs> when they uh, when they switch from the the Caesar calendar, the Julian calendar, to the Gregorian calendar, there's like there was numbers that messed up, and they think that there were about there's people who believe we're about two to three hundred years further behind than we actually are. That is crazy. And there's no evidence of that, but there is a section of the Middle Ages that nobody really has any history on. I don't know what happened in eight hundred, seven nine hundred. There's no real written history of it. That, that is insane. I'm just saying. All right. We're going to end made, with... Like, a Google spreadsheet or something. I know. Just go... Bro, Dumb. just put a calendar on it. Like, put it in the computer. It'll work out. Dumb. Um, okay, so here's the last thing that we have. It's a little bit more on the serious side, maybe. I don't know. But fears. Everybody has a fear. Everybody has a fear. You can't be like, oh, I'm not afraid of nothing. Boom. You know why? Is I, when, I, when you first said fears, I was like, oh, I'm not afraid of nothing. Of course you are. And once, then you I think was like, it, once you think about it, there's a lot of things you're afraid of. Oof. Did you know that one of the most recognized fears, there's a couple of them, um, but agoraphobia is one. Agoraphobia is a fear of like, uh, I think, not agoraphobia. What's it? What is it called? Anyway, it's a fear of open spaces. So like open water, like deep water, like Mm. if you can't see the bottom, most people innately have a fear in that. That's like one of the biggest fears, right? Is it like the fear of open spaces or the fear of the unknown? It's kind of the concept of the same. It's the same concept, but Mm -hmm. like specifically people fear open water yeah, that's crazy. right because because you can't see underneath you there's a fear of what's possibly underneath there and people will get themselves psyched out by doing that and open spaces in the sense of like there's nothing and you're just there it's like too open right mm. the, the opposite of that would be claustrophobic when you're too close but yeah. like in general most people fear because they have no idea what's on the other side there's a genuine fear on that do you know that most people have a fear of human like dolls I was literally just talking about this like the other week. It's like a DNA thing. Like even babies fear like humanoid like dolls. There's like that whole thing with the new AI robots or right. or some movie the what, what movie? Polar Express. Yeah, the, people were like it's weird. It's like it's too human like, right. but there's something off about it right. and it creeps people out. Right. I but, forgot what it's called, but right, I was talking right. about it too. Yeah, there's there's a weird there's a, that's one of the another one that's a high high ranking is that yeah. type of thing. And weird. people think that that might be like a genetic, like not genetic, but like a DNA, like we've evolved to hate, to fear these things. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll go first on this one. I tell this to a lot of people. I don't fear heights necessarily. 
Say it. Say but it. I fear falling. Yes. I agree 100% with you. I can, I can be, we can be hiking in the mountains. Zero issue. But as soon as I feel like something's not even, I think I have a fear of falling in general. I don't like slippery things at all. Like it freaks me out. Not right. freaks me out, but I constantly am fearful that I'm going to slip and hurt something. I motor, whatever. But anytime I don't feel like I have a good grip on things, like I don't feel even, I'm not comfortable. I get, I get almost panicky. And it has always been a thing. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I just, the fear of falling, it doesn't matter where. Again, I, I'm cool with heights. I'm not, I'm not cool with falling. Ever since I said that whole thing that I was scared of roller coaster or whatever, I've been getting ragged on. And Bro. Um, they were like, oh, you're scared because it's so tall. I'm like, no, that thing is going to jump off of its rails. And oh, that's, that's 100% going to be the last it's, thing. I like, it's almost like I'm going to get I'm... shot out of a little <laughs> cart with fire painted on the side of it. And that's the last you'll ever see of John. It's, it's, it's like, I don't, I, like, I, it's not the, it, if I'm on a roller coaster and there's like a, a, a drop, the anxiety, like the anxiety of it is like the, the pressure, right? The yeah. Jesus would give it to you. But really, it's always, it's also like, oh, it's not going to catch me at the bat of this. No, 100%. Like, it's not, this is going to be the time that the rail breaks. And I'm going to be on the news for the wrong reason. Because it never happens until it happens. That's right. And then I'm on the news for the wrong thing. I don't want to be in the news for that. That's not what I want to be known for. What would you want to be on the news for? Um, Off topic, but. Wow, what a great question. We'll get back to it. <laughs> I got to think about that. Okay, so other than falling, what's another fear you have? A fear I have. And yes. it's because I had to think about this one because, right. again, I said I wasn't scared of nothing. Of course. I am scared of being forgotten. <gasps> oh! My. I literally was going to be, that was going to be my next thing that I was going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm scared that like oh, 10 years man. from now, I'm going to see somebody that came to this school and God be like, hey, what's bless, up? And they're going to be dude. like, who are you? And I'm like, oh, no, you didn't. Man, know. you know, I, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. I think the reason why that's a fear of mine is it almost makes it as if what I've been doing is it's useless. pointless, bro. Hundred percent. And that's the. I think most people would say they don't want to be doing things that are pointless. And I understand. Listen, I hear it all the time. Oh, why am I at school? This is just, that's a different thing. That's just you being lazy, whatever. Do your work. Do your work. But, like, and here's the thing. I, it's, I'm not sitting here acting like I've been doing things. I've been out here trying to make moves, blah, blah, blah. It's not oh, what yeah. I'm saying. But I do, there is something to having a legacy that is important. Oh, yeah. I think most people want to be left, like, people want to remember. I talk about my dad all the time because I don't want to not talk about my dad. Because I know that one day he won't. Nobody was going to know him from, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's going to be a time on this earth that like people won't know him. And I don't want that to be my fault. I want to be able to talk about him and I want to give yeah. information. Right. So like, yeah, everybody does their business to do their thing. But like, I, that's a, it's weird. But like, what if one day, like there's just, uh, for example, 20 years from now, you're hopefully retired. Yeah. I, hopefully you're retired in two years, by the way. Shout out to your wife. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be dope. Uh, but like, if I see you, let's say you're just shopping, bro, and, and I'm, I'm like, and I, "Gee," and you're like, "Who are you?" I'm a no you reverse roles. If I'm like Moreno, and you're gonna be like, "Who, who are oh, you?" I'm gonna be that like, would never like no, "That would never happen, bro." And I'm gonna kick you out of your wheelchair, and I'm gonna walk away. Bro, I'm only gonna be like sixty. I'm not uh, gonna be in a wheelchair. You fam. already have a bad knee. All Whatever. right, it, look, the time is not on your side. I agree. <laughs> it's not on your side either. No, 100. percent I think 25. Is I, my I, limit. I, so I do think that at some level, you're right. I think people don't want to be just like forgotten, mm -hmm. and it it makes sense. Look. It makes sense. Like, why would you want to be forgotten? Because then it also makes you feel like you don't have an impact on someone's life, bro. That's wild. Like, <sighs> yeah. I like to think I'm pretty impactful. Maybe yeah. not necessarily like, oh, I made your life better, but like, you right. know, I remember well, that okay. guy. So had a I'll, good time. I'll say this. Time. I'll say this. There's definitely people I graduated with, or the year before that, the year after that, that have no idea who I am. Yeah. I, and I, that's because I didn't know them, whatever. But like, in my opinion, if I spent time with you, no, I want 100%. you to remember me. Yeah. I want I want our interaction to be so And it sounds selfish. It does. It sounds conceited a little to an bit. extent. However, because However of the why. However, because of the why. And the why on this one is who wants to be for, No one wants, no, to be no forgotten. one wants to be forgotten. Nobody does. It makes it seem like Nobody you does. lived a meaningless uh, life. Right, a pointless life. Like are there is does everybody get their name in record books? No. No. 
No, and I understand that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm trying to do I things. I will though. <laughs> <laughs> but I think at, at some at some like level, I want I would love for people to know who I am when I'm gone. Yeah, we've talked about this a little bit, I think. But like the purpose, the reason why we do what we do, me and my wife, the reason why we save the way we save, the way the reason why we are, invest our money the way we invest, is so that there's a legacy of us when we're gone. We want to be able to give our kids out of generational poverty, which should be everybody's goal. You should your goal in life should be when I die, the people left behind, parents or not parents, kids, grandkids, cousins, whatever. Everybody should be a level of like doing better. I don't I don't want my kids to suffer and I don't want my grandkids to suffer and I don't want my great grandkids to suffer because I want to be able to leave a legacy so so tight. Like I want to be able to leave financially a way for them not to have to worry about being poor. Yeah, I don't want my kids to have to worry about and my grandkids to worry about any of it. In that, I also want them to know my name. And I know that sounds conceited. It, no, it sounds it sounds kind of selfish. I ain't gonna lie. But, but I don't want to be forgotten. Exactly. I don't want like. Do I want to be the president? No. But I don't. I don't necessarily need to be in a textbook. But I want somebody to. It'd be dope if it was though. Completely <laughs> off topic. Kanye West is in a textbook for school. That's sad. He's sitting next to Donald Trump and they're talking about him. Whatever. Uh, Kanye West. God bless. Yes. Oh, stop being weird. Take your meds. Um, but no, that's, it makes sense. That makes complete sense. Not being forgotten it's is a good. It's a good one. It's a good one. Um, I think I'd want to be in the news for doing something good for other people. I don't know what it is. I have, I've been in the newspaper before. Like I interviewed um, uh, 2020, summer 2020, I got interviewed because um, it was post George Floyd. And I did a 8.46 mi- a mile run. Basically the time that he was, the knee was on the, his neck. I did a, a run for that. Um, and I was inspired because Danny Massey had put something out, which is our superintendent. He put something out that he did something for, you know, a run or something. Mm-hmm. I was not in shape, and it was murderous for me because it was hard. I say that not, like, figuratively, but, like, for me, out of shapeness, I wasn't ready for an eight-mile run. Mm-hmm. I did it. I posted it on social media, and, and I was like, I did some, like, BISD 8.4 or whatever, and I challenged people to do something like it. So I got interviewed for it. It was a great interview, and I, I, you know, it was amazing. They did a great job. The facts actually did a really good job on the interview. So yeah, I've been in the news, but like it's for a, I don't want to be in the news for negative things. I want to be in there because I impacted somebody's life. Like the newspaper or the TV? No, it was on the newspaper. I've been on the TV once. Newspaper. I've been on channel channel two once. Not a big deal. KPRC. Yeah, it was. They were asking. It was post the twenty twenty election. And they were asking questions about it. And me and JP took a day off. It was his birthday week. He turned 18, and we went to go grab breakfast at our favorite spot. And um, actually, it was the first time I'd ever taken him there. And he loved it. We were there, and there was a news news camera crew there. And so they asked us about what are our thoughts about people saying that the election wasn't real. And I just I said something. He said something. We were on the news, whatever. I've been on the news. It's not a big deal. Whatever. Day. Like, it's not – I don't think about it. I don't – I had to think back that I did it. But, like, those are things that I want to be on the news. I don't want to be on the news for, like – Crazy old man running around like a crazy person, uh, I don't know, peeing crazy on things, thing. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. By the way, that was on the news one point. When I was a kid, that some guy had done so much drugs that he went completely naked and ran through a car. As he should. As he should. Um, okay, here's what I want. I want people to comment. I want you to comment what your fears are. I want to know. What things do you fear? I know people who hate clowns. I, I'm okay with them, but I don't like I them. Don't but I don't prefer them. them. <clears throat> right. But I'm not going to, like, cry. I'll say this. I see a flying roach. I'm punching. <gasps> I can't do it. You know how many times? People found out that I, I genuinely do have a thing of cockroaches. Like, if I see one, I'm not going to kill it. I'm going to wait for someone else to do it, and I'll just pick up my feet very gently. And I'm not going to make a big scene about it. But, but you don't inside, like it. I'm, like, 100% freaking out. Right. And when someone found this out and told other people, whenever they would kill a cockroach, they would bring it to me. That's horrible. And I kid you not, that's when I would do my fascist 40s. That's <laughs> You're at the combine. I was at the com- I would. That's so funny. I would make it to the league if if, if someone, someone chased me with the cockroach. <laughs> I would make it to the league. So good. Uh, no, if they fly, I'm I'm trying to punch people. Don't I don't yourself. like it. I've, I've screamed. I yeah, I I'm okay with snakes. I don't really have a problem with snakes. I'll hold them. I, I touch I them. I think they're gross. So I don't. Yeah, I think they're weird. But it's whatever. Yeah, I think there's people who have weird fears. Let me 
Mexican people and their weird, like, superstitious fears are just, I'm like, bro, bro, there's no, La Llorona's not coming, fam. Bro, that owl is not a human being. Yeah, Relax, bro. <laughs> Ah, when this they come in? No, they don't. Here's the thing, though. We're not saying any of your fears are unreasonable. Right. However. However. Because of this why. It's not real. It's not real. <laughs> Be afraid of the dark. No, I get that. that. That's Bro, genuine. the dark is like unknown. I don't know what's out there. That's I understand. Genuine. Yeah, I get that. But. Don't be scared of red balloons. That's so weird. That's awkward. Bro, the Loch Ness Monster isn't real. Also, I think Sasquatch a, might be real, but we haven't found him yet. There's no evidence. There's a whole thing about that, the whole Loch Ness uh, Monster. It just being somebody with like... <laughs> no, no. So... It's in a lake in the, the middle no, of nowhere. Whales, okay, this is gross. A whale's penis. It's giant. It's huge. They think it was... A, and they think it was just a whale's penis in the same Oh, uh, that would be so funny. And this entire time, it's of, just been oh, a whale. Loch Ness Monster. Uh, yeah, but like, I, there's fears. I get it. I think it's weird, you know, like the people who fear the like circles inside of things. Oh, I don't know. That's I, that's I can weird. Understand? It makes me feel, ugh. Right. Like I, I will say this. Like if it's a disease, I'm sorry, but yeah. like, ugh. Yeah. There, I do have a friend of mine who doesn't like a lot of people in the space. If he's, if there's too many people, he has anxiety attacks, and that that is called agoraphobic. The other thing I can't remember the name of it. It's the open space just has a name, but he fears too many people in one spot. Like, he just gets so, like, he'll literally, I, he would come to our house, and we would tell him, like, hey, man, we're having a birthday party. People are going to be here. And he would have to, like, get himself psyched up to be there for about an hour, and then he would go in our house and just, like, go in our bedroom and just chill. And we were cool with it. We loved Jake. He was our guy. I understood it. There is one weird phobia that I don't completely understand. What's There's that? a phobia where if a word can be read the same frontwards and backwards, that they just start freaking out. That's just weird. That, get over yourself. Bro, just learn grammar. And with that, we'll wrap up today's podcast. That, that was a good, good episode. Yeah, that's a good little one. Uh, we went off on tangents, but it's all good. Some slight. Uh, uh, all right. Next week, we'll have somebody. Mm-hmm. We don't know yet who. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Like and subscribe, man. We're trying to be. We're trying to monetize this. I'm trying to like not work. If I could drop out of school a Whoa. day. Whoa. No, chill. If I could drop out a day of school because I made money off of doing this, I'm 100 percent gonna do it. Uh, well, if I can Proceed. go on, a, if I can go buy golf clubs with this, I'll be fine. I want to drop out. All right. (laughs) That's just a flex, but whatever. Uh, We'll see you next time on the podcast. Thanks for watching. Thanks. uh, Comment, like, subscribe. Yes. The whole schmeal. Tell me your fears. Sure. All right. All right.